on Alpha. Vehicles pitching down range. Gage long propulsion is nominal. And there it goes. The space race just got more interesting. SpaceX, led by founder Elon Musk, sending its first ever all civilian crew into orbit, giving four tourists a chance to experience outer space. It is groundbreaking. The crew, called Inspiration 4, will orbit Earth for three days. Those four civilians were chosen to symbolize positive aspects of humanity, including leadership, hope, generosity, and prosperity. News Nation reporter Amanda Holly from our Tampa station, WFLA, has the latest on tonight's launch. Just after 8 o'clock Eastern Time Wednesday evening, SpaceX makes history once again by sending the first all civilian flight to space. The Crew Dragon capsule will orbit 350 miles above Earth, dubbed Inspiration 4, to represent the four private citizens whose main mission over the next three days is to inspire and raise money for St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. At the time Inspiration 4 was created, and knowing that this was, this was going to be a first, and there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that, that, you know, we had to send a message that there are real, real problems and real obligations we have to pay attention to here on Earth in order to earn the right to make progress for tomorrow. Jared Isaacman, the commander who funded this mission, picked Haley Arsenal for the hope seat, having survived childhood cancer herself. The other two crew, Dr. Sion Proctor and Chris Simbrowski, were picked from separate contests held earlier this year. All four astronauts will not only be 100 miles higher than the ISS, but will also have an even better view. When we get to reveal the cupola for the first time will be a, a really big moment, I think, um, because that view, you know, we're all excited about it. The only thing different on this Crew Dragon is a cupola instead of a docking adapter to the ISS. It is now the largest continuous window to ever have been in space. The crew, while excited about the trip of a lifetime and the views of a lifetime from the cupola, truly hopes this trip will inspire people to pledge back to St. Jude. Reporting from Cape Canaveral, Amanda Holly, back to you. Cool trip, great view, all for a good cause, Amanda. Thank you. We now want to bring in Jose Hernandez, a former NASA astronaut who knows firsthand what it is like to launch into space and spend a little time up there. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Marmy. It's a pleasure being here. And yes, it's uh, it's very inspiring to see four civilians to go up uh, into space and uh, and and just basically have the ride of their life. Right. I can't imagine. I mean, did you ever think you'd see this day tourists in space? I, you know, I ne had never thought about it, but the more I think about it, the more I like the idea because it's going to create an awareness. It's going to give people that orbital perspective that so many of us astronauts talk about that we come back uh, feeling changed and a deeper appreciation for our, for our environment and for our planet. And so we, we become better stewards of our planet. It's certainly exciting and I don't want to diminish that, but do you as an astronaut, given all your training and experience, have any reservations about tourists, civilians spending days and this length of time in space with the potential risks involved? I do. There's risks involved, but you know, in 1914, the first commercial uh, passenger plane took off and there were risks associated with that. And so we have to start somewhere and uh, kudos to these civilians that risk their lives to uh, have that experience of a lifetime. They trained for about six months. Tell us what some of the things that they would need to be ready for for three days in space. Well, I think, first of all, they have to be ready psychologically in terms of uh, their body is going to feel different being in a zero G environment. They're, uh, they're, they may get um, space adaptation sickness, so it takes about 24 hours to get adjusted to that. It's kind of like being car sick. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then uh, they, they have to get to work because they have a timeline. They also have experiments they're going to do. And, uh, but, but they also have to force themselves to enjoy the, 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 uh, the scenery and the view. And, you know, they got that nice cook, uh, cupola up there that they can take a 360 view of our whole universe. And man, what, what a privilege that is. What a window to see. Why did you become an astronaut? What inspired you to go to space? Um, I, mean, I was, if you can picture a 10 year old in 1972, <laughs> watching the very last Apollo mission 
on a black and white vacuum tube technology TV, holding on to rabbit ear antennas. There I was watching Gene Cernan walk on the moon. And I said, that's what I want to be. And my dad, who only has a third grade education, wow. uh, had the wow. wisdom to give me a five ingredient recipe. He said, decide what you want to do in life, recognize how far you are, draw yourself a roadmap so you know how to get there, mm -hmm. get yourself an education. And the same uh, uh, effort you put out picking fruits and vegetables, uh, Saturdays and Sundays and seven days a week during the summer, he pointed to my books and said, you put it in your books. And so you mix that up. That's the recipe to succeed. There you go. Lit the fire. Jose Hernandez, thank you so much for your time. Congratulations to, uh, to you for all you've done and exciting to see thank this you, new venture in space travel. Take care.